Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This right here is the Magizmo Haiku High-End Custom Flashlight. Um, yes, apparently high-end custom flashlight is absolutely a thing. And in fact, this is a grail light for a lot of folks. Um, it's one of the best-known custom flashlights made by a uh, one one guy. And uh, it's an interesting little light. It is a, uh, you can see here, it's using a standard CR123 sort of battery cell in there, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, it's using a single clicky switch at the back here. So that you click it on, click it off, and you can go through a couple of different modes by partly depressing. There we go. And uh, there you go. Uh, let's do a quick size comparison for you. Uh, here it is next to the uh, CR123 battery that's in there. Here it is next to a standard AA battery. And here it is next to a uh, 18650 size flashlight battery. Compared to some other lights, here it is next to my personal favorite everyday carry light, the TAC D25A. Here it is with the Olight S1R baton and with the Olight S2R baton. So uh, you can see this is not a huge light, but it's also a little bit bigger than some of your other conventional everyday carry options. And uh, what the heck, here it is next to the Jetbeam RRT01. So uh, there you go. That's your size comparison. Now let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting flashlight. So first on the good side, it's a beautifully made object. The machining is nice, none of the edges are particularly sharp. Um, the clip on it is very nice with this sort of cracked ice finish, which I like. And most importantly, it's not another damn black tactical flashlight. Um, this looks way more interesting than this little guy, and I appreciate very much the willingness to make something that is pretty and distributes light. Next thing, speaking of that clip, the clip is great. It's a nice length, it's good and long, which gives you good retention, and it's it's also it hitting the light in a pretty sensible position. Um, you can slide this into your pocket and you're going to catch the clip, and when you pull the clip out of your pocket, you're going to be in this position already to adjust the light. Speaking of which, the interface is pretty straightforward. If you use a partial click, you go through the different modes. Low, medium, high, low, medium, high, low, medium, high. That's That's really it. And when you find one you like, you just press the rest of the way in and it stays on that way. This also enables a momentary on sort of situation, which can be handy. And, uh, you know, overall the interface is pretty simple. Just three modes and you partially click to get through them. Speaking of those three modes, they're actually pretty nicely uh, spaced. So you get something that really does feel like high, medium, and low, rather than two highs and a low or something like that. Um, and it's also plenty bright for its size. I mean, this is pretty capable outside on your high mode, which is around 140 lumens. Um, I'd have no problems guaranteeing. Uh, sorry, navigating outdoors with this at night. Um, the medium mode is quite nice in a dim to dark room at about 30 lumens, and the low mode is great in a very dark room, which is about 4 lumens. And you get pretty good runtime too. You're looking at about an hour and a half on your high mode, three and a half on your medium, three and a half hours that is, and about a day on the low mode, which is very excellent if you're a mole person and live underground. Um, and then finally, um, you get some good customization options for this guy. You get different battery sizes. You can get different emitters. You can really nerd out and configure this because it is a custom light however you'd like. Then finally, well, yeah, I'll mention it. This looks like a lightsaber. I grew up on the Star Wars, and this has a little bit of a lightsaber feel to it. Something a little bit like Anakin's lightsaber that uh, Obi-Wan gave to Luke. That's 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 what you got going on here, and I, I appreciate that. As a, as a kid who once had a lightsaber-shaped remote control for the TV, this is scratching that itch very much, and I'll admit that brings it near and dear to my heart. So um, there you go. That's what's good. It looks like a lightsaber. You got some options customizing it because it's a custom light. The runtimes are a little bit above average for lights in this class. It's plenty bright for its size, got a nice easy interface with nicely spaced modes, got a great clip, and it's a beautifully made sort of object. Um, let's go ahead and talk about what's great about this little flashlight. The beautiful thing about this light, for me at least, is the light that it puts out. More so than most lights, this has a beautiful sort of blend of flood and spot. It's got a very strong spot in the middle of it, and so you get some throw out of it, but at the same time, 
it very nicely and very evenly fades out to something that's a, a very gentle, sort of floody sort of affair. It's hard to describe until you feel it in a dark room and then you're like, oh, there it is. But nonetheless, it is very, very nice. Um, I'll also say that the light quality is great on this guy. This is the XPG2 in a neutral white tint, and the color rendering on this is just spectacular. I mean, again, this is something I can't show off on a cell phone camera, but it is wonderful. I'm a big, big fan of it. The color rendering here is great. And so that's what's really great about this light is that the it just it lights things up beautifully. And that's really what a flashlight is supposed to do. So the light here is beautiful. And that itself is a beautiful thing. But let's talk about the bad. So on the bad side, as with any kind of custom product, whether it's a custom light, a custom knife, a custom any other damn thing, it is only really supported by the maker. Uh, whereas, you know, a production light, you can get spare parts from Olight conceivably, or just get another one and swap out the tail cap if it means a lot to you. This guy, you're reliant on the one guy who made it for your support, and that's a little bit ugly in and of itself. It's depending on the person who you're going to have to deal with. But, you know, hopefully it won't be a problem, because it's a pretty well-built light. Next issue, um, for me, there were only three settings. I mean, they're well-spaced, but if you want something in the middle, you're kind of hosed. And I'm a really big fan of rotary lights, where there are quite literally no settings at all, where you can go from maximum brightness to minimum very, very quickly. I, I like that very much, and this... The three settings here left me a little bit cold, like, well, but there's so much in the middle that I'm missing out on. Um, that's kind of a nitpick, I'll be real here, do I need more than three settings? No, but especially being used to some really nice rotary lights or lights that give you a little bit more in the way options, this is a little frustrating. I'll also say it's pretty big for a CR123 light. I mean, seriously, the battery inside this guy is not large whatsoever. Um, you're looking at something about yay big, yet it's taken this much light to hold it. A lot of that is this very nice reflector that gives that great light pattern without any chromatic aberrations and whatnot, but it's still... It's big, and it's particularly it's thick. I mean, seriously, if we look at this guy next to a U.S. quarter here... Imagine carrying something a little bit larger than a roll of quarters around in your pocket all the damn time. A little bit longer in that way. That's that's pretty thick. And then when you've got this guy clipped, say, in your side pocket uh, where your keys might go, uh, it's really, really, really obtrusive. It kind of stabs into your legs, especially this top part here. And so this guy was just not in great in the pocket particularly. It's also a little bit on the heavier side. If we uh, throw this guy on the scale, you're looking at 3.3 ounces, as opposed to on something like your Reed Tack here, you end up with 1.9 ounces. I mean, this is not a lightweight sort of light, because it's a big chunk of nicely machined metal. And those two things, the weight and the size combined to make this a, a light that I didn't really enjoy carrying on a regular basis on my person. It's great in a pack, absolutely, but um, it's not a great light that I just throw in my pocket, you know, on the other side from my knife, that way I've got it with me. I always felt it carrying it that way in a way that I don't tend to feel much smaller and thinner lights. So that's your bad here. It's uh, not a great light to carry because it's pretty heavy and it's pretty large. Um, it's only got the three settings when there were so many more throughout the spectrum. And because it's a custom light, the only help you're getting is from one guy. So you're kind of at his mercy. Um, let's talk about the ugly here. The ugly thing about this light is the price. Um, I haven't mentioned it so far because I think it adds for a more dramatic reveal. The price of this light is $475. For those of you unfamiliar with the concept of money, that is a lot of money. Holy crap. And don't get me wrong, I'm willing to pay a premium for a well-made product, and this is a well-made product. But honestly, I just, I cannot see that much money in this light. I don't know where that money went. It's it's a nice light. It's a beautifully manufactured object, but, you know, only three modes, and they've done something that's really nice here, but, oh, that's a lot of money. Holy crap. And so I just can't imagine going that deep on this flashlight. It's fine. There's a lot of good here, but, oh, that's, that's money. Holy cow. So um, let's go on ahead and uh, talk about the final conclusion for this light, although it's maybe a little bit foreshadowed at this point. 
Look, this is absolutely a great flashlight at some level, and I really can't overstate how nice the light coming out of this is. The, the, the lack of chromatic aberration, the, 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 the smoothness of the... It's just, it's beautiful in that way, and it's a beautiful object, too. But it's also, this light is a case study in the curve of diminishing returns. This is the idea, I've got a whole video about this, that, you know, if you go from a $5 light to a $100 light, you're gonna get a huge improvement. It's gonna blow you away. But if you go from a $100 light to a $400 light, you're gonna get very, very little improvement relative to that initial jump. Y your money basically wins you less as you spend more of it. Brutal. But um, let's do a case study here and compare this to my very favorite everyday carry light, the EGTAC D25A. Uh, this guy is about 75 bucks as opposed to 475 over here. And if we put the size aside and carry aside for a moment and just compare them as lights, um, in terms of brightness, they're about the same. Um, you know, I'm not sure, so I can't really make that call. Um, the Haiku does have longer run times, though, about 10% longer. The switch on the Haiku is definitely nicer. The construction is nicer on the Haiku, 100%. This is made in the USA by one person. This is made in a factory someplace in China. And the light quality is absolutely a win for the for the Haiku, although this I've got a, a neutral uh, light in this guy, which makes it a closer race than some. But, you know, if we put the size thing aside, I would say the Magizmo is nicer, maybe 10 or 15% nicer. But the problem is the Haiku is 600% more expensive than your EGTAC over here. Um, 400 bucks is a lot more money to spend. And, you know, it's nicer, but that 400 bucks weighs you, wins you way less than that first 75 you spent to get here. And then if we bring the size of it back into it, the EGTAC wins for a mile by me. If this light were gifted to me, I would probably still carry the EGTAC, just because it is much better in the pocket. And so, you know, look, if you've got that much cash to spend, if you've been given $500 with the instructions that you must buy one flashlight, then here you go. This is a great light, absolutely. It's a, a nice high-end custom flashlight, and it is beautifully done. But the simple fact is that you can buy six lights, which are damn near as good as the Haiku, for the price of one of these guys. And so, as a result, I just can't recommend it. Or put into Haiku form, light is very nice, pricing involves crazy pills, so buy cheaper lights. There you go, Haiku final conclusion. Get it? 575? <laughs> Anyways, I hope this has been interesting, that this review lit up your life and kept your wallet from being... 500 bucks lighter, um, and uh, hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.